All right, now that we have created these two formulas, we're going to do a little bit of practicing, but let's quickly review them. So we have an explicit equation and a recursive equation. The explicit equation helps you to find a specific term. It could be far off, and we don't have to keep going through the pattern step by step by step. Um, we can just pick the number of term that we want and all we have to do is know what our start is, where we start, and then we know what our common difference is. We multiply that times one less than our term number, add it to our first term, and we'll get the value that we need. A recursive equation is what we've been doing all along. We have our first term well, we have wherever we want to start, and um, and if we know our common difference, we just if we want to find a certain term like the tenth term, then we have to know what the ninth term is, and we add the common difference, and we can be good to go. So I've written those two equations up here in the know this box up here, right there right there. Um, you're going to kind of want to learn those, but you can always figure them out if you just sort of reason through it. So don't feel like you have to memorize it as much as you just have to understand what it's representing. So memorizing helps, but I still forget them and I have to write out a table and then I can figure it out. The recursive, it's pretty simple. You just know that you have to know the previous term, so that's what the n minus 1 is, the previous term, and you add your common difference. The um, explicit, you have to know what your first term is, and then you're going to add to it your common difference a certain number of times and so if you add it a certain number of times the number of times is going to be one less than the actual term that you are looking for. Now let's do a little practice. Uh, down here it says write the explicit and recursive equation for each sequence. So I give you the sequence. Here's the first one 3, 8, 13, and 18. So the first thing you have to decide is you've got to know um, a few things. So you should write over here a little note to yourself, like say, what's A1? Okay, so what's A1? A1 equals 3. And what's the common difference? Well, the common difference is 5, right? I'm adding 5 each time. So now that I know what a1 is, and I know what my common difference is, I can figure out my explicit equation. Um, I can say, so let's say that um, uh, I want to know what the um, 15th term is. What's the 15th term? Well, here I have this as the first, the second, the third, the fourth, I want to know what the fifteenth term is. So my nth term is the fifteenth. So I want to know what a fifteen is. a sub fifteen. Well a sub fifteen is going to be start with my first term which is three. So a sub one is three and I'm going to add to that my common difference which is five but I'm going to add it a certain number of times and I'm going to keep adding it until I get to my 15th term. Well, from my first term to my second term, I only added it once. So when I get to my 15th term, I will have added it n minus 1. So that means 15 minus 1. I'll have added it 14 times. So if I multiply 5 times 14, I'll be able I'll be able to figure out what 5 times 14 is, add it to 3, that's how many times I've added 5, and I should get my answer. So that's how I do the explicit. If I wanted to know what the recursive was, suppose then I would have to know what the previous term was. So how about if I say, what's the fifth term? What's the fifth term? So if I want to know what a sub 5 is, 
all I have to do is know what the term before that is, the previous term, and that would be a sub 5 minus 1, which is 4, so whatever a sub 4 is, and then I just have to add my common difference. So, to figure out what um, the 15th term is, it's a lot easier if I use the explicit. But if I want to, if I want to find the fifth term, which is the very next term, then it's easy to use the recursive. So I use each equation for different reasons. So you go ahead and tell me what those two um, terms are. Tell me what the fifteenth term is, and tell me what the fifth term is. So first, do the fifteenth term. So for the 15th term, I knew I was going to add 5 14 times. So 5 times 14 is 70. And then I'm going to add that 70 to my starting term, which was 3. So that means that my 15th term is 73. All right? Now you tell me what the fifth term would be. What is the fifth term of this sequence 3, 8, 13, 18? Well, in that case, all I had to do, if I wanted to know what the fifth term was, I had to figure out what the previous term is. So the term right before the fifth term is the fourth term, because 5 minus 1 is 4. The term right before it is, is, um, is the fourth term. So the fourth term is 18, and I just have to add my common difference, which is 5. So the fifth term is 18 plus 5, which is 23. Let's see if we can do the next one. See if you can figure out for 11, 9, 7, and 5. That's my sequence. See if you can tell me what the, well, you should be able to tell me what's the first term. What's A1? Well, it's 11, isn't it? And now tell me what's the common difference. The common difference is 11 to 9 and then 9 to 7, I'm doing minus 2. My common difference is minus 2. Now, let's pick um, a, a term that we want to find. And let's say that we want to find the tenth term, shall we? Let's find the tenth term. So can you find a sub 10 using my explicit formula or my explicit equation? Well, let's see how you did. If I take my tenth term, I know to get to my tenth term, I have to start with my first term, which is 11 and I have to add to it my common difference, but I have to add it a certain, I have to add it over and over and over again. I actually have to add it nine times. For my tenth term, I have to add it nine times, one less than ten. So I'm going to add negative two nine times. Now I just have to figure out what that is. Negative 2 times 9 is negative 18. So I know that I'm going to add negative 18 to 11. And I'm going to get negative 7. So my tenth term is negative 7. Now I could have figured it out by using the recursive, right? I could have said, well, let's see, I have to take my previous term, so let's see, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, so to find a5, I'll have to take my previous term, which is a4, a sub 4, and add a negative 2. So that would be my previous term, sub 4, a sub 4, a sub 4 is 5, And I'm going to add to it negative 2. So that means that a sub 5 is 3. And I could actually then find out what my sixth term was 
by subtracting 2, and that would give me 1, and I could find out what my seventh term is by subtracting 2, and that and you see, I could figure it out. I could use the recursive equation to get all the way to a10, but it's easier to use my formula. Okay? So that's explicit and recursive equations, and you have to really work with them and do them over and over again to get familiar. But this is the key right here. That's what you need to know. And if you can learn that and understand what it means, you'll do very well with sequences. Now you just need to write yourself a key idea right here. Work on your practice, do a briefing, and come see me in class.